What's going on everybody, Shonen Express here, coming to you with another Return to Sender video. This time, we are looking at Guardian of the Witch. Um, I really like this manga, so I'm excited to get into this, but before we do, I want to just let you all know there will be spoilers for the manga Guardian of the Witch in this video, so if that's something you don't want to see, go ahead, read Guardian of the Witch, it's only 19 chapters, um, then come back to this video. But, if you don't care about spoilers, go right ahead. So, as I said, today we're going to be looking at Guardian of the Witch. Now, this is a manga that I have done some manga reviews on some of these chapters, and so I, and like, uh, way back when me and Shania were doing the Shonen Express podcast, um, and we were going over everything in the magazine every, every week, back then we did, we looked at this manga, and we actually both really liked this manga, so I wanted to revisit it, because it's only 19 chapters long, and that means something definitely went wrong with Guardian of the Witch. Something happened that made them want to cancel it, so I wanted to figure out what happened to Guardian of the Witch and why was it not successful by pretty much any standards within the magazine of Weekly Shonen Jump. So, like all my videos, first we're going to start with a review, then we're going to go into breaking down kind of why I think this manga got canceled in Weekly Shonen Jump, and then we will we'll go into where I rank this manga on my tier list. We'll, we'll be able to put it up there and you'll, you'll be able to see all the other ones that have ranked and where this stacks up against some of them. So without messing around anymore, let's just get right into it. So the first category that we talk about during these reviews, during the return to sender videos is the art. I think that the art in Guardian of the Witch is really good. I definitely like the style this might be a personal choice but and, and if it is you know feel free to let me know down in the comment section below if you didn't like this artwork let me know but i really i like how clear it is everything is regimented and and kind of similar but but different enough and so i i like the way that this art style conveys what it's trying to convey specifically i like how it conveys uh the action scenes so it's not maybe the best at conveying the motion, but what it is really good at is making you understand what has just happened in a given action sequence, which is something I can't say for all mangaka, but but this mangaka, the, the author of Guardian of the Witch, definitely does a great job of showing you what what is happening at any given time, and so I think that's very helpful, especially for people who haven't read a lot of manga. It's very helpful to get them into manga by being able to read these ac action sequences that they can easily see and understand. Um, so uh, overall, I think the art for Guardian of the Witch definitely deserves a pro, um, just because of its simplicity and its and its clarity. Those are things that I look for in artwork um, in a manga, so I'm definitely going to give it a pro. Which will bring us to the second category that we need to look at in these videos, and that is the characters. I'm probably going to spend a lot more time on the characters than I will most other aspects of the show, just because I have more to say, I think, about the characters in in Guardian of the Witch than, than others. But I want to start with the main three. So, we follow Fafner, Manasfa, and Nata around through this world for for all 19 chapters all three of those characters are there from the from chapter one to chapter 19 they're with us the whole time and so they are clearly the most important characters for us to understand so i want to start with them and so we'll start with fafner who i i think is the main character i would consider him the main character so i think his traits are evident from from day one right he is a hard worker um He's a driven guy, and he is a kind person. He is not necessarily willing to, you know, like, just lay down and follow orders like some other characters we see later. He, he is a honest and kind person, but he's also driven. He's going to make this come true. He's got the, we've got the whole traumatic thing in his past that, that he's dealing with with his family. And so, you know, he's got all the makings of a, of a shonen protagonist for sure. And he is exceptionally strong for those in, in his, you know, of his area. So all these things put together... Fafner's a, a, a good, solid, normal, shonen protagonist. I, I think that he, he, serves, he serves that position well, and there are multiple moments where, in his fights specifically, he does something that's really cool. But I will say, 
I think that that is relegated to the beginning of this series. As the series goes on and as they find opponents that are stronger and stronger, these moments where Fafner looks like he's in control kind of lessen. And so, you know, he just, he looks less in control and he looks less cool that way. So, not that that's a bad thing, just it's it's definitely the beginning of the series, Fafner looks super cool, but by the end it's kind of like, okay, he's, you know, he's a shonen protagonist struggling. But, yeah, um... Manasfa, who is the, I would say, maybe the secondary protagonist here, um, I think she's a really good foil for Fafner. So Fafner's a more serious and straightforward guy. Manasfa is is kind of joking, and like she's like faux selfish. I actually think she has a better character than Fafner does. Manasfa's character is is pretty nuanced in that it's it's she's she has this like air of selfishness about her but she isn't selfish. She's the reason like why she eats so much is because she has to sustain the the evil the you know that seed of evil she's trying not to turn into an evil. So like this is the reason she acts the way that she does. And it's not just out of you know pure selfishness like we seem to think it is in the beginning and she's she is bullheaded and determined that certainly one of her main traits but she's not so bullheaded as to not understand the situation she's in i think she does a good job of towing the line of being responsible and taking care of the things she needs to take care of while also you know, achieving her dreams, striving after this goal to be the last witch to make sure that this this bad system ends. I, I think she's she's doing a good job with that, and so I, I like that about Manasfa. And I think she's she's probably one of the, the most fleshed out characters in this in this very short manga. And then that brings us to Nada. And Nada I, I go back and forth on. In these nineteen chapters, she goes from feeling like from being like helpful and she knows information that Fafner and Manasfa don't know and so she's able to kind of give this information to them and help them along in their journey that way and other times she's just like irrelevant she's just like in danger and that's a problem or like someone will hit her and it will be upsetting to the main characters I think that's actually exactly what Gen does um when they first meet them but I so she she ends up going from like this helpful like ally of this of this adventure to by the end of the manga kind of feeling like like a add-on like she doesn't really add anything especially as they keep introducing new characters that kind of take some of that emotional weight that she might have had and and put it onto other characters so i'm not i don't know how i feel about i feel about nada for sure um but that leads us into all of the other characters, and we meet several. So I want to talk about the two the two guardian and witch pairs. First is Gen and Ruli. Um, they they show up for a couple chapters. Um, they're the first guardian and witch pair that that our main team fights. Um, I like them. I think they're cool. I think it's a really weird way to use metal magic, or I don't know if it's metal or steel specifically, but. It, it looks kind of strange to use it that way, but as far as characters go, it's the cocky kid and the, the quiet, shy girl. They're okay, but that is literally their whole character. And to be fair, they're only here for like, I think, maybe four chapters. So it's not a whole lot of time they get on screen, but they're not very characterized very well. And the second pair is Claude and Spica. Now, I think that Claude and Spica are characterized much better. In fact, Claude is my actual favorite character in this manga. I I am a sucker for, for rule-following characters. I and we'll get to later in the plot in the plot section why I think Claude actually presents an actual problem for this plot. But um I like him. I think he's characterized really well. I like how they characterize the rule following guy. Um, sometimes that can come off in a good way and a bad way, but I like how it came off. I like that he is a good person. One of the things he does that, that is really, I think, amazing is when Spica, like breaks the rules to bring food to those poor people, he, he says, no, you can't do that, but then he immediately makes up for it. He says, ah, my family, go to my family's storehouses and take the food from there. He makes a way for these people to still get food while maintaining the rules. And that's something that you don't normally see in, in manga. And so I loved seeing it with Claude. I, as I said, I'm a Claude fan. So I liked his character. And Spica's character was interesting too. Her hesitation to fight the main crew because she knows what they're trying to do. It, it's, it's real. And I think that these two characters presented the first like 
actual side characters that had something to add to the narrative of the story. And so I did really like them. But the other side character that I have to talk about is a uh, Drake. He's he's this doctor. He used to be a guardian and he I I believe it's confirmed he had to kill his witch who he was also in love with. Um he he is his design is super cool. I love his design. I love that he fights with like this sword with the with the skeleton hand on it. I it's I really like the witch doctor aesthetic that he's got going. I love his training of Fafner. I like how he's really skeptical pretty much all the way up until the end. Um and so I like a lot about Drake. But again, Drake is pretty much just the old man master trainer guy that shows up to help Fafner get a little stronger. Um but when he shows up, we haven't really been with them for that long. So I, I like Drake. I think he's a good character. I think he was introduced too early in the series. But considering it's only 19 chapters long, I suppose he was introduced at the right time. But if they were trying to make this a long-running series, I wouldn't have introduced Drake so early on. I would have let them struggle for a little while longer on their own before they met Drake. And that training could have definitely lasted longer too. But that's that's all part of the plot. Uh, we'll get We'll get into that later. But... Overall, the characters, I think, are actually a, a con for this story. While I think that there are many characters, as I've said, that do bring interesting things, I think they are just really standard. Other than Manasfa has a couple quirks that are not standard, but Fafner and Nada, the other two main characters, are super like standard shonen stereotypes. Along with that, the other side characters are pretty much non-entities um, until we get later in the series, but by that point, we were already having some trouble. So, I think overall, I'm going to give the, a con in the character category. So, that moves us on to the mechanics of the show. Um, and... You know, if you've seen these videos, what I mean by mechanics is the power system and the world. Pretty much the setting of the show. Um, I call it mechanics just because it's mainly... I mainly focus on the power system. Because I review a lot of shonen, I mainly focus on the, the power system of a given world. And so that's what we'll focus on here. So, what I like about the power system is it is is it's it's super shonen, right? And it, it leads into a lot... Specifically, it, I mean, it has to lead into several tag team scenarios you have to fight as a unit a guardian and a witch have to fight together um if they want to be successful if they want to be stronger i think that's a cool idea and i think that that idea could be elaborated on in a very cool way i mean all you got to do is look at look at series like black clover who has the black clover has a basic magic system pretty much anything could be used there but the way he uses team battling and tag team attacks really you know bring that basic magic system up to a new level and i think that the the the, the puzzle pieces are all here for guardian of the witch to have a similar kind of advanced magic system um but Unfortunately, I don't think that they really access that. Again, they only had 19 chapters to do this. And Drake, I think in Drake's training, he actually starts to bring in some of this nuance where he starts to talk about these little like seeds that he can make magic come out of and how strong he is, even without a witch. He's, he's bringing in some nuance, but we never really revisit that. And uh, to top it all off, the main characters are the fire people. Um, if you know anything about anime, fire, anime and manga rather, fire is kind of the, the basic go-to main character ability. Um, and so, just be, because of that, it's it almost lends itself to be a, a basic kind of combat system. And that's what it ends up being. It ends up being a very, like, I use fire, they use whatever they have, whether it's metal or gravity, which is Claude and Spica. Again, going back to my Claude and Spica are just inherently better than the other characters in this show, but um, because it's so basic, I think th that it suffered a lot of problems in the combat area because the mechanics just are normal. And the whole thing with the evils, again, there's a lot of depth here that we could have accessed, but in the 19 chapters that the that this manga had, they didn't access any of that depth. And so we're left with a power system and a mechanic system that's just kind of leaves you wanting. And so I'm definitely going to give a con for the mechanics in in Guardian of the Witch. So that leads us into the final 
element of this manga that I want to discuss, and that is the plot. So I do have a couple pros and a couple cons for the plot. So I liked how simple it was. I thought I like the simple going from village to village scenario. They're kind of coasting along. They're going to meet new people on their way up to this northern Noir village where there is this witch who has retired. And so they want to find out what's going on up there. And so they're going to go. They're going to, you know, they're making their way up there through these villages. I like that. I like the simple kind of traveling through the kingdom kind of mentality. I think, I think that that's interesting and that it leads to a lot of like peaceful kind of fun that you can have with this story. Um, so I like that. I think that it's, you know, it has some problems, but we'll get to that in a minute. But I also liked the, the training arc. So I think manga, especially more recently, struggle with implementing good training arcs. Training arcs that seem to, to be interesting and, and retain viewership. Now, to be fair, when I was a kid, I didn't like training arcs at all. But now that I'm, now that I'm kind of older, I'm more mature, I really do like uh, a good training arc. I think a good training arc is, is, is very helpful for a story, and I think that Guardian of the Witch actually has one. Drake training Fafner is very interesting. I, I like their whole journey together. I like what they do there. I, I think it's a good training arc. My only problem is it lasts for like three or four chapters. So it's not a very long training arc. It's a very short training arc. And it's it's good that it's it's brief in on one hand, but I, I definitely think that there was more to be discovered there. But I really liked what we did see. I liked how hard Drake would push Fafner. I thought that that was interesting, and I really liked Drake as a mentor character. So that part of the plot I did like. I liked its simplicity. I like its training, but its biggest problem is the pacing. The pacing was lightning speed. I mean, we went from one village to the next village to the next village. We never stopped, never slowed down. And granted, there was only 19 chapters, right? So they, they were trying to get in as much as they could, I guess. But I really think that backfired on them. I think you should spend, you know, 10 or so chapters in each village, slowly making your way to no ear. I think that would have been a better way to go about this. And and somewhere on the line, you can meet Drake and do that training. I think if they spread it out more, this would have been a much better manga than, than the one we got because the pacing wouldn't be quite as bad. Um, and then, as I alluded to earlier, there's a big, I think, problem in in the messaging. And Claude, Claude brings this to the forefront, right? So before their fight with Claude, you could imagine that, okay, they're trying to save Fafner, Fafner and Manasfa and Nada are trying to save other witches. They're trying to change the world to be a better place with more equity and all of that. But Claude shows us like this middle path almost, which is he seems to be someone who, who will, must follow the rules, but he also will make a way for those rules to be adapted in a way that will be helpful to people. And so I ended up walking away from that, not thinking Claude was right, because Claude, we see, they, they kind of like force Claude off the deep end of the rule-following ledge. But if he would have stuck true to his, okay, I got to figure out a way to make this work, to make this effective, he, he may have gotten there. I, I think... I think the blatant disregard that Fafner went in his fight with... Uh, Claude shows. I think his blatant disregard is he he just throws the rules out. I, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that's a good moral to have. And so I personally have a problem with this moral um, to just chuck the rule book out willy nilly and not not try and think about it and really you know work through it like I think Claude does. So I think Claude presents a problem for the whole plot. But that aside, the ending of this manga was incredibly rushed. I mean, they were in a different town with that Aqua and her dad. They were doing that. They wrapped that up real quick in about half a chapter, and then they spend the last half of chapter 19 just wrapping everything up. They do a flash forward to five years later. You know, they do the time skip, um, and everything's okay now. We made it to the witch, and I think even Drake says something like, Drake made this ring that suppresses evils, and that's how they do it, but they had to get a serum from the witch in no ear, and like, but we didn't get to see any of that, so like, the ending is super disappointing, um, especially for a manga that at the time I was definitely invested in. I was reading it every week. I wanted to know what was going on, and so 
it, it was really upsetting to to see to see how it ended. You know what I mean? But um, all of that considered, I am definitely going to give the plot a con for this manga. I, I don't think it's a good plot, so that's where we are. So, since this is a return to sender video, we've got to we've got to discuss what happened to Guardian of the Witch. Why was it only 19 chapters long? Why did it get canceled so early in its run? Normally, manga get about 27, 28 chapters, and then they're canceled. What on earth could have happened that 19 chapters later, Guardian of the Witch it just tanks? I think if you haven't already picked this up from from the first part of this video. I think Guardian of the Witch's main problem, and what definitely caused it to get cancelled, is how generic it is. It's its basic magic, magic system coupled with its pretty pretty basic main characters, along with this, this you know, kind of run-of-the-mill plot, ends up feeling just very generic and normal and not very interesting. I, I was actually interested reading it week to week, but when I reread it for this video... I really found myself having a hard time going back through it, not liking it nearly as much as I did the first time. So, I while I don't think any of the elements were bad, right? Like, none of them were, like, terrible, right? I think it just, it wasn't impactful enough. And so I don't think it held readers' attention and really held the 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 ranks that it wanted to go. I also don't actually think the mangaka knew that it was going to be canceled until maybe the chapter before. Because, and I say this, because he started a different arc with that Aqua chick and her dad, and then he had to end it in the same chapter that he had to wrap that arc up in. So I really don't think he had expected to get canceled this early at all. He or she, um, I actually don't know. If you do know um, uh, the name of the mangaka, I could probably look this up, but leave it down in the comment section um, below. Along with any other work that they've done, if you know, leave it down there, but... I, I I, don't think they knew that this manga was going to get canceled until the very end, and then they had to wrap everything up. And so that ending is not really the manga's fault so much as it is, you know, it got canceled really early. But I really do think that, that w at the pace we were going, this manga would have wrapped up at like 40 chapters and would have ended that, that way. I think that that was the plan. Um, and I really don't, I don't think that's a good plan. This could have been a great manga, but it just, it just wasn't because it was too plain, too normal. And I think that lost readers. And that's why we didn't, you know, we didn't see any more Guardian of the Witch after chapter 19. So that leaves us with one last topic to cover. And that is where does Guardian of the Witch land on my manga tier list? So after thinking about this for a while, I, 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 I came up with an answer, but before we get into that, this is the current tier list. So these are all the manga that I have on the tier list right now and, and where they are on the tier list. Um, in case you haven't seen any of my other videos, the tiers are pretty simple to understand. Um, at the top there, we have S. S is something that I, I refer to as sublime. So it's something that has changed me personally, really affected me deeply. As you can see, we don't have any S's. So we haven't reviewed anything or did any return to center videos that were that impactful on me. A is something that I think is nearly perfect. I really love whatever mangas are in the A tier. B is uh, manga that I think are great. They are super, you know, they're just great. They're great manga. Um, C tier are manga I think that are good. D tier are manga I think that are bad. And F, or E tier rather, I think are manga that are terrible. I hate hated them, just absolutely couldn't stand them, right? So that's what we got going on right here. And so after thinking about it and trying to place it for a while, I think that Guardian of the Witch is going to go in C tier. I think that Guardian of the Witch is a good manga, but it's certainly not great. But at the same time, I can't say it's bad. I think I liked it. I enjoyed it while I was reading it week to week. And even though I had a kind of rougher time reading it for this video, I do think that it is a good manga. Um, and so, yeah, it belongs in my C tier, and that's where it's going to go. Thanks, guys, so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you have anything to say, leave it down in the comments section. I'd love to talk to you about Guardian of the Witch or, or any anime, manga, anything like that. Please leave your comments down there in the comments section. If there's a, a short manga that you want to see a Return to Sender video on that maybe I haven't, I haven't done yet, please leave that in the comments section too. I'd love to see your suggestions, and I might even be able to, you know, read the manga and do, and do a video on it. Or maybe I've already read it, so who knows. Um... 
So definitely leave those comments down there. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. I bring you videos like this all the time along with my weekly Shonen Jump newsletters. If you keep up with Shonen Jump, definitely check those videos out. Um, I bring those to you every single time Weekly Shonen Jump comes out. So I definitely would encourage you to to subscribe to the channel so that you can get these videos on the regular. Also, be on the lookout. I'll probably be putting out a uh, Mori King Return to Sender video probably pretty soon here, considering that just ended in the magazine. But So be on the lookout for that too. But hey, thanks guys so much for watching. This is Shonen Express, signing out.